All right, today we're presenting on reducing cold start emissions, and uh, we're doing that to the use of modeling a catalytic converter with a heating element. So we obtained some data from a friend of ours, and this is the data from the catalytic converter, the exterior of the catalytic converter of a Toyota Corolla, and this is the manifold part of the exhaust. And so as you can see right here, the catalytic converter warms up along that line, but right here is what we call light-off temperature, and that's when the pollutants start to be uh, reacted into less toxic substances, which is an exothermic reaction, which causes the heating rate to change, as you can tell by the change in the slope right there. And so that light of time occurred approximately around seven and a half minutes, and we have a goal of getting ours clear down to have a light of time around a minute. And then there's the seven and a half minutes right there. About. So air pollution every year kills 1.3 million people worldwide and also causes several billion dollars in crop loss damages just in the U.S. And so about 25% of uh, car emissions are actually due to cold starts. So in Simulink we uh, modeled a catalytic converter and to simplify things we made the assumption that uh, the catalytic converter was a CSTR rather than a PFR to uh, simplify the temperature gradient to simply be constant inside um, as well as conversion happening inside. We implemented these um, energy and material balances uh, inside the coating of this reactor to uh, explain the temperature or the, the heat transfer dynamics. Uh, we also assumed that the reaction happening inside was first order um, to simplify things. Uh, and also, we assumed that there was no conduction happening from the catalytic converter to any other part of the car. So we simply modeled the convection uh, happening inside the and outside the catalytic converter. Uh, yep. So enable, in order to validate our model and make sure that it was accurately modeling the data, um, we compared the performance of the model to the data that we had. So this plot here on the left shows the initial performance with the uh, initial parameters that we obtained from research and from some order of magnitude guesses. And in this, with these initial parameters, the catalytic converter did reach a light-off temperature, as you can see um, by the change in reaction there. But that light-off temperature occurred uh, at about 400 Kelvin, and based on the data and our research, we were expecting it to be closer to 477 Kelvin. Um, so we decided that was because the activation energy we were using wasn't high enough. So we raised the activation energy and we also had to increase the rate at which the exhaust temperature increased so that we could reach that um, activation energy at about seven and a half minutes like the data showed. Um, so this plot on the right shows um, the model performance after we made those adjustments and you can see we are reaching the light off temperature at around 484 Kelvin, which is close to what we were expecting, and that there is a slight increase in the reaction, but the reaction does not take off like we were expecting. We decided this was due in part to the heat of reaction not being high enough to continue to drive the reaction, and that there was not a fast enough heat transfer rate from the exhaust to the catalytic converter. So we increased those two parameters, and <coughs> we're able to come up with this plot here. And um, this, again, shows that we are reaching a light-off temperature around seven and a half minutes. And th that light-off temperature is about 44 Kelvin. And in this plot, you can see that the reaction does take off and increase the temperature of our catalytic converter. All right, once we had our catalytic converter modeled, we wanted to see the effect that the heating element would have on it. So we did performed a doublet test using our model from uh, 3200 watts up to 6400. 400 watts down to 0 watts back up to 3200 watts as seen on the graph on the bottom here. And we chose this range because we wanted to model the heating element over a wide range but without setting off the reaction because we didn't want the reaction to have an impact on what our the control over heating element. So we took that data and we fit it to a first order plus dead time model and our initial guess parameters are seen here in the top left of our gain our time constant. Um, and then um, we further tune those constants um, to better get to where we want our goal in one minute. So our final time constants we end up using are 273 and 19.99 um, for our gain and time constant respectively. 
Um, our light off time that we achieved was about 63 seconds, um, as you can see here on the model. Um, and you'll also notice here on the bottom that our power rating to, in order to achieve this went up to about 1,500 watts, sorry, 15,000 watts, um, which is quite a hefty draw. Um, and we figure that you could not do this with a regular car battery. You have to do something like a hybrid car battery in order to achieve this. Um, you, you also notice that the wattage doesn't drop off immediately. It takes time for it to step down. And this is because it takes time for the exhaust temperature to catch up to where the catalytic converter temperature is at. Okay, so what this all means, if we could actually implement this design, we could cut cold start emissions by 83%, which is pretty nice. And that translates into eliminating 21% of air pollution due to cars. And in the overall grand scheme of things, that would reduce total emissions by 10%. And so assuming that reducing pollution is proportional to saving human lives, our proposed idea would actually save 130,000 human lives um, every year.